Uh, okay. Thank you, Karen. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, New York City Office of Emergency Management's Urban Interim Housing Unit Pilot Program. And um, the goal for this project, uh, which we've been working on since about 2007, is to create a proven capability for um, deployable housing that will work in urban areas. And uh, we started considering um, this project as um, a competition, which, which was called What If New York City? And um, looking at the idea of, um, as Matt said, a Category 3 hurricane hitting New York. Um, and we have uh, in New York City these particular um, challenges of, of scale, um, 3.1 million units in the city and um, a, basically a third of them are lying within our evacuation zones and the yellow is the evacuation zones which were identified by a um, core of an, uh, an Army Corps of Engineers um, model and so um, through our coastal storm plan we built a sheltering system that will um, house 605,000 people for um, up to five weeks and so we know that we're going to need interim housing after that and um, so right now this is a gap in federal preparedness. How do you get um, interim housing um, in our, in cities like New York where we have um, very little open space and um, we need multi-story buildings and um, also multifamily housing types. And so the thing that we did, um, basically our first step was to get the best ideas on this topic and we started a design competition, um, as I was saying, um, to collect um, ideas from designers and we got um, over 100 entries from all around the world. And um, since then, to make um, bringing housing to New York a, a um, viable option, we have been looking at what's out there on the market and um, then we also have been looking at what it is that we really need and um, trying to um, meld those two together. And so what we did was create a, um, an urban housing performance specification and um, what we did was basically put, put that out there um, as an RFP asking vendors to um, submit to us um, the performance of their, their existing systems sort of um, against our, our specification. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. And so then the other question that uh, we ask when we're dealing with housing in cities is, um, you know, what it is that makes a neighborhood. You know, the goal of the program is to keep people close to home and to um, create, um, you know, the feeling of a neighborhood and of their own communities and really use housing to stabilize people's lives. And so we want to, of course, test this in the real world. And uh, where we are in the project now is um, we're working with the City University of New York to develop a uh, prototype um, of this, um, you know, of a system of prototypes that um, we will then evaluate and refine the performance specifications so that um, what we're doing is coming up with a um, specification that will work for urban areas throughout the country. And um, this um, module right here came out of the design competition. It sort of embodies everything that we were looking for in the actual uh, unit design itself, um, which is to say it's flexible, can accommodate a bunch of different um, sizes of unit, and then also is progressive in terms of sustainability. We want low operating costs. We want um, smart, innovative, green strategies uh, for these. And we're also really looking at um, speed and scale. Um, how do we get as many of, of these housing units to the city as fast as possible. And so in the competition, we were asking people to show us a full um, sequence of logistics. Um, do they come by boat? Um, and do they come by air? And um, then when they get to the city, how is it that they're assembled? And so um, process of assembly is something that uh, we're interested in. And this um, 
had some appeal. This is basically repurposing some other, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> this is uh, repurposing an auto factory to create um, housing. And the thing that we liked about this project is that it had, um, you know, sort of an infinite scale, um, you know, and the units could, could um, stretch out. And um, so if um, we create a capability to really um, generate huge amounts of housing, we are also um, looking at where they go in the city. And so this has really been sort of an urban design project from the beginning. And um, as we're um, sort of pursuing this goal of how to keep people close to home while permanent housing is being restored, um, we also have been sort of looking at different strategies. Um, could they go above a street bed while the houses are being uh, restored behind? Or this, this uh, proposal for um, housing that was attached to the um, buildings that were being repaired below. Um, but really we're focusing on practical solutions and what we can actually do now. And so with our Department of Design and Construction, uh, we created a performance specification that allows us to leverage uh, the full capability of the private sector. And so this isn't a design specification, it's just a performance specification. And if a company can um, meet our standards in terms of, um, you know, universal access, um, and uh, various code requirements that we have for fire safety um, and, um, you know, a spectrum of other things that I'm happy to um, tell you about um, if you'd like to, to ask um, after the presentation. And so uh, then, as I mentioned, we put this out um, on two vendors and asked them to show us, okay, we, we um, have seen a lot of data on how these work as individual units, but how is it that they work as multifamily, multi-story buildings? Um, and so the um, responses that we got back, we, we evaluated in terms of the plans and the details and also the um, logistical strategies that um, I mentioned earlier, and then um, cost estimates that, that we got from the vendors. Um, and. Uh, also sustainability and mechanical performance. And so when we talk about um, speed, um, so fundamentally, as I said, we're dealing with this problem of, of speed and scale in, in cities. And so um, we took the um, typical process of construction in New York City, and this is a project that we've been working on with our Department of City Planning, and looked at um, pieces of the process that could be waived um, or combined or better coordinated to um, get housing in place very fast. And um, the project that we've been uh, pursuing very recently is this urban design playbook, and we've been basically looking at typical conditions in the city that might be available after a disaster and um, looking at how we can put housing um, in these various conditions, you know, cleared land, um, an existing super block, a pier, um, and uh, looking at design strategies that, that make this operate like a community or like a um, real New York City neighborhood. And so how do you include services like laundry or um, retail, um, restoration of mom and pop businesses, pharmacies, and access to uh, critical, critical um, neighborhood anchors? And then also how do you make, how do you um, include public space, um, areas for children to play, good, um, you know, places for people to gather outside? And really we've been focusing on this critical um, aspect of any uh, urban neighborhood, which is street life, and how do you include uh, that as part of a post-disaster condition? Because we know that the reality is that these will be in place for several years, and um, so when we're restoring, uh, so when we're providing housing, we also want to really um, think about this in terms of a real um, community, uh, temporary community. Um, and so, 
I'm going to show you a movie now, which is um, a very uh, recent um, project that uh, we have uh, with city planning. And, uh, and so we're also tying this project to um, projects that have to do with um, climate change and the, the, uh, the, the um, gradual change that comes from global warming. And so this uh, shows how um, interim housing uh, is, is related to that. And uh, the voice that you'll hear is our, the, our chief urban designer, Alex Washburn, um, who is working on a lot of the city's climate change initiatives. So this is just a minute long. This is Prospect Shore. Like many New York City neighborhoods, its story begins at the water. Here is a vibrant shopping street. The next block is walk-up apartments and townhouses. Here is industry on the waterfront and a bulkhead dating back more than a century. Then one day, it rains and rains and the seawater rises. The bulkhead and much of the industry is washed away. Unreinforced masonry buildings are collapsing into one another. A layer of debris and foul-smelling mud blankets the ground, clogs sewers, leaving pools of standing water and shards of debris. Interim housing is brought unit by unit onto a vacant lot. The units sit lightly on the ground. They draw their power from rooftop solar panels, their water from water towers. Rain is captured for laundry and irrigation of temporary plantings that line the courtyard where children play. Then, over time, permanent mixed-use development replaces the interim housing. The remaining masonry buildings are preserved, hardened, and integrated into hurricane-resisting building fabric. They also have breakaway ground floor panels reserved for areas of retail and parking. The geometry of their envelopes is optimized to withstand wind forces. The new streets and buildings in Prospect Shore drain into a restored waterway where native plants bioremediate any toxins before they reach the harbor. Industry is rebuilt at the waterfront, but now integrated with a public esplanade and protected from storm surge by an earthen levee. Wetlands have begun to take root, and barrier islands line the shore, perhaps with oyster habitats. The neighborhood is back, better, and more sustainable than before. So thank you. That, that, that's uh, the end of the presentation. And again, we're, we're very um, honored and glad to be here. And uh, I think we'll have a panel discussion now.